Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well. It's uh, time for my Saturday briefing, especially to uh, ministers and especially to the great NCR, North Central Region ministers that I am privileged to serve. I send you sunny greetings from South Carolina. I am so blessed to be able to spend a couple of days with my parents and uh, Sanja with her mother, uh, our parents, uh, to be able to spend Thanksgiving with them. And so uh, I am a little more relaxed and casual than I normally are, am, I guess. But uh, enjoying uh, chilling out a little bit here in Walhalla, South Carolina. And I guess anytime you're during the holidays, and especially when you uh, go home uh, to visit with family and your parents in particular, you get a little... Uh, reflective and and in remembering uh, the past a little bit and so i uh, i want to share with you something today uh, i want to entitle this little talk uh, ministry a competitor or a calling ministry a competitor or a calling uh, i remember uh, my growing up in a minister's home and i've been in the ministry i guess all my life my dad uh, was running from the call of God on his life and joined the Navy, kind of like Jonah. Thank God he didn't get thrown overboard, but he did <laughs> get on a ship. And uh, But the call of God would not relent. And so he got out of the Navy and long story short, uh, uh, left there and moved to South Carolina. That's why South Carolina became home. And he went to Bible college here in the Greenville area. And uh, that's how we got here. And so really all my life I've been in the ministry. And I remember the ministry uh, growing up in a preacher's home. Uh, my sister and I, uh, I, I remember I never looked back at the ministry in a negative light. My mom and dad went out of their way to make ministry something that, that we did together. Some of my best memories, honestly, are things that we did in and around the church uh, I was just made a few notes here, but uh, ministry was never a burden. It was always a privilege. That's what my mom and dad would teach me, that we, we it was a privilege to be in the ministry. Uh, we did things together. I, I remember one of my most special memories is a little tradition. We would always give out a fruit bag, would have some fruit uh, and candy and just some goodies in there that we, the church always gave those out during the Christmas season. Well, Dad and Beth, my sister, and I were the ones that always did that. Some of the most special memories. Uh, when when Dad got on the youth board, we went to youth camp and worked together as a family. When we went to camp meeting, we did it as a family. Ministry was, was a family. We just did it together. Uh, my dad would take me with him as a boy. I, I remember going to the hospital, going on visitation with my dad. My dad, he, he never talked bad about the ministry. He had some disappointments, both at church and, and in other ways. He had some disappointments and had some hopes and dreams that didn't come to fruition. And and But he, he was never bitter. He, he never spoke bad about it. And, and dad would always share any little success I've had in ministry. I think I can lay a lot of it at, at the feet of my dad, who, who more importantly than including me in ministry, he included me in his thinking process, why he did certain things and, 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 and why certain things were happening. He'd help me to connect the dots, both on a local level and in a denominational level. And so he really, that was quite an advantage. And dad would share with me his mistakes and he would remind me of his mistakes and say, son, don't learn from me. Don't make these same mistakes. And so long story short, ministry for me and my my sister is no longer with us but and she never went into full-time ministry vocational ministry but i don't think she and i both i don't think she ever stopped seeing herself as being in the ministry my parents were very intentional about including us in the ministry together we were in this thing together now this leads me to the issue i want to talk to you about and and it's kind of a the horns of a dilemma here. It's two, it's two prong. One is I'm, I'm going to say part A of the issue that I want to share with you is what I will describe. I was kind of in the middle of this, as, as you'll see when I get through here. 
but I, I will describe it as the me and my dad's generation, the, this part of the dilemma or this part of the issue. And this was the, the word on the street, the party line was ministry before family. And, and I grew up with this, hearing this, and, and ministers would always put the church before family, always. And, and if you take care of the church, God will take care of your family. And that's the way, that was the way ministers were taught. And so it was uh, family was the competitor. And you had, to, you had to keep family in its proper place because when you were called into the ministry, the church was the cent center of everything. And so what happened with, with, the, with the philosophy of ministry before family, the results were a lot of regrets and bitterness. You see this, this is the kind of what we call the typical preacher's kid who feels resentment and bitterness and, and a lot of times spouses as well because of all the sacrifices. And I didn't, the church took my dad from me. The church especially years ago in the church of God, so many of our, our fathers were pioneer kind of preachers and church planters and just dug out churches and, and there were not a lot of benefits and there were not a lot of money. And, and so, you know, preachers kids had to suffer and struggle and were, were always kind of maybe considered second class citizens in the community. And so when, when it was ministry before family, you see a lot of people that were in ministry, even a lot of ministers are burnt out and they're bitter and they look back with a lot of regrets and the church, I, I did everything for the church and didn't take care of my family. It's not a pretty sight. But then, you know, two horn dilemma. There's another side of this dilemma that I see today. And this is part B of this issue. And, and I will term this me and my son's generation. And this, and I saw this, this is kind of the philosophy today. And that is family before ministry. Whereas the, the previous generation, it was church before ministry. Church, a family was the competitor. You had to, you couldn't let family get between you and God and ministry. Well, now in many ways, and a lot of times if we're not careful, church is the competitor, and we've got to keep the church at bay. And so what happened, the result in the first, regret and bitterness, uh, resentment against ministry. Now, but, but I see a lot of times the results today is that if we're not careful, family can become an idol, and ministry can become a job. And we see, you know, I'm not going to let I'm not going to let the church rob me of my family. And and both both intense. There there was the motive behind it was sincere, and there was truth in both of those. But now we see we see ministers who who feel guilty if they miss one ball game or one concert, or or if they're not constantly being whatever this model dad or this model mom, and the church is always interrupting and. And, and so we feel this tremendous pressure to be, uh, to be this perfect parent or this perfect spouse at the expense of ministry. And so we, we have ministry as a competitor, and, and sometimes the church doesn't get its due diligence. It's just a job, and we check out. And, and it's kind of like a doctor who says, hey, I'm not on the clock, and they're just going to have to die. And... and and, and what would we think about a doctor that was that way? But but a lot of times we see ministers that will be that way because they, it's just a job. Now, as I said, there's truth in both of those horns of the dilemma. There's good and there's bad. But here's the solution. And this is, what I, this is the thought that I want to leave with you today. See ministry as a family calling. Include your family in the ministry. We're in this together. It's a privilege to do something together that really and truly matters. And it's, help your family to see that we are doing, include them as much as you can. We are in the ministry. That's not daddy's job. That's not mama's job. That's our calling. God's got a call on our family and we do this together. And, and that's, that's the, spirit that I grew up in. And I, and I hope that's the spirit. That's what I tried to intentionally do with my family, my children. 
and it's, the church never robbed us of anything. Everything we have was given to us by the church. Every opportunity and all the opportunities that we've had was by God, given to us by God's people. And so the calling is not my calling. It's our calling. We're in this together. And so now I do want to give one little quick disclaimer, one word of warning. Do not, and here it is, do not allow, including your family in the ministry, to stop you from equipping saints for the work of the ministry. I do see this sometimes, that pastors, they, they push and promote their children so much and they get so dependent on their children that they stop raising up and discipling the people in the church. And so as a result, as invariably happens, when a, a, a couple things here, the, the pastor will eventually, for one reason or the other, the pastor leaves, and when he leaves, he takes his family with him, and there's no new musicians or soloists or teachers or people that know how to work uh, the, the media and all that stuff. And so now the church is left bereft. And so don't weaken the church by trying to strengthen your family. You, you as a family are there to equip the saints. And so that's just one word of warning. And what happens too for our family, when we put all that pressure on our children, it, we are robbing them of finding their own individuality. And one day they'll grow up and they'll move or they'll want to move, but they, they'll feel this guilt. Well, I've got to stay and help daddy. I've got to stay and help mom. And don't put that on your kids. You, we are in the ministry for the equipping of the saints. So closing, let me, let me close with this. I think about, this is kind of the way I've raised and I, I teach my children this as well. But many years ago, God called an Abraham Kemp and a Sarah Kemp, an Abraham Kemp called Harry, who was a coal miner's son. And a Sarah uh, Wood, who was a flatland Eastern North Carolina girl. And they met in Norfolk, Virginia. And God called them. They started on a journey. And along came an Isaac. And I met a, a, a Rebecca in Six Mile, not too far from here. And we're the second leg of that journey. And then I've told my children this, and I've, I've reminded them that they're like the Jacob, the third generation. And my son is over in South Korea today. Uh, he's probably in bed right now, but there in South Korea, he is in the ministry. He is a Church of God ordained bishop and a chaplain, a full-time army chaplain. He and his wife are in the ministry. And, and of course, now what I'm trying to do is convince my son and my daughter to give me 12 grandchildren. They've given me half. I've got six, uh, the sons of Jacob. But, but what I'm saying is I see not only the calling that's on my life as, as a calling that for me and my family, but I'm talking about me and my family, the sons of the prophets. God has called my family. I'm just a part of that story. And my dad passed on. He didn't call me into the ministry. I feel a strong sense of vocational ministry in my own life. But even my sister, who never went vocationally into the ministry, we never stopped seeing ourselves as a part of that, that journey, that story that God began through our mom and our dad. And now we're passing it on to our children. And I've whispered, uh, shared in quiet moments with my grandchildren, the story of our family, how God loved us so much that he not only saved us, which is amazing, but then he privileged us with calling us into the ministry. And I, I, my prayer is that all of my grandchildren will see themselves as a part of this bigger picture where God called a, a, a coal miner's son and a girl from Eastern North Carolina and started a wonderful story that we call the Kemp's being in the ministry. And that can be your story, your version of it. So let me summarize it this way, and I'll send this, this to you in my, in my notes here. But here's the central thought. Being in the ministry for most is not an individual calling. It is a family calling. In other words, God calls families into the ministries, into the ministry. The benefit of this 
is that when we see ministry as a family calling, we do not make our family or the church a competitor. We make our family a part of the calling that is on our lives together, and the church becomes a part of our extended family. The result is we end up loving and serving both well. And so I win today if I can help you to learn to balance family and ministry in a healthy way by including your family in your calling. We're in this together so that you'll be free from the guilt of always making an either or choice. Instead, you see family and church as God's privilege, his privileged calling upon your lives together. So I love you all and looking forward, I honestly am looking forward to being back in Bismarck in a little cooler weather. We miss home, my Zelda, my cat's up there. I hope she's okay. We'll be leaving out in a, a couple of days and heading back home. We miss you, but uh, we're privileged to be here. I send my greetings and send Sanja's greetings and we send our love. And to all of the precious ministers and their families around the world, thank you for what you do. For all the members that support the ministry, God bless you so much for including us in your lives. We're all family and one day, we're going home. We're going home to see our Father God, whom we pray, our Father who art in heaven. We hallow his name and we honor his servants today. God bless you as we continue to run to win.